Hi hey guys, my name is Carl Schwinar. I'm in charge of the development of design system here at the grid, working with a great team of software engineers to create what is the brain behind website building. So when you share a piece of content in the grid web application, that content is sent to our uh, image analysis system uh, if you have some image in your post. Uh, and that system is named Caliper and it will do stuff like phase detection, saliency region detection, color extraction, and so on. Uh, and once you're ready to publish to that content to your website, all of your content will be sent to the composer as long with your user preference and your uh, and if you're in the process of a design review, uh, we will also receive the question, the answer to the question that were asked to you in the design review process. Uh, so the first step in, in the composer is named a tuner. So the tuner responsibility is to take the answer you provided. For example, in the design review in the web application, you will be asked some question like, how do you like the colors of your website? And, and then you can answer from one to four star uh, and based on the answer you provide the tuner will try to, to, to get a new to calculate a new spectrum value that will best fit your needs and your, your taste uh, in terms of design. Once we have the spectrum value calculated based on the answer of your design review questions uh, we send those spectrum values to the mixer. So the mixer job is to pick UI components, uh, picks also harmonies, so we'll talk a little bit more about harmonies later, uh, pick harmonies, pick data classifiers, and, and a bunch of stuff, uh, but basically it's picking up a configuration that will allow the system, the composer, to, to generate your website. Uh, but the main thing I think to to uh, to remember here is that it will basically pick the UI components for you. So here at the grid we have uh, thousands of UI components that we're using. Uh, UI components can render a title uh, up to render uh, an image gallery, for example. Uh, and each of these component as a as a styling guide. So if your website if you want your website to be artistic or formal. Uh, we're, we will basically use a different set of UI components uh, so, so you get the website you want. Uh, and this is the mixer that does that, that does that part. And the mixer is relying on, on some constraint programming uh, on a constraint solver that we've built here at the grid that is named Multiverse or Multiverse. So, um, so because the mixer has a lot of possibility on how to combine those UI components, how to harmonize, uh, how to define your page, and how to uh, how the grid will look like, how the, the layout will look like. There's a some thousands, thousands, thousands of possibilities. So the way we search in that in that combinatorial space is done through uh, the tool that we've built named Multiverse. So once we have a mix, uh, because it's a really a mix that will be used to create your website, uh, we we go to the tagger. So the tagger is responsible to classify your content. Uh, so we do two, two levels of classification, one at, one at the site level and one at the item level. So an item is really a, a post, a piece of content that you share through the web application. So if you write an article in there, if you share a tweet from somewhere, that is an item. Uh, and once when we receive that, those items, we classify them to to identify some classification like, okay, this this item has a huge photo, it's a repost from Instagram, and so on. Uh, and those classification will allow us to take some decision further down the line. What we also do is a site classification uh, for, for stuff like, okay, this site is mostly composed of pictures, so I will optimize the rendering of the site using uh, image galleries or and stuff like that, or well, this, this site is composed mostly of text, uh, so I will pick UI components and I will pick a grid configuration that uh, maximize the impact of that type of, of content. Um, but at this stage, it's really more about classifying content. And this is where uh, we also use some, some cl more advanced classifiers like neural network classifi classifiers, uh, 
to, to help us uh, identify those classification tags uh, on the items. Um, and then, so once, we, once our content is classified, we send that to the poet. So the poet main responsibility is to define the flow of information in your, in your website and structure your content in, in a way that will uh, fit your site purpose and maximize the impact uh, of important items as well. So, for example, if your site purpose is to promote your, your content or promote uh, your blog, well, you might want to end up uh, giving more space to an article you wrote yourself rather than to a tweet that you shared from somebody else, for example. So the poet will identify these kind of, of things based on classification and site purpose and so on, and will decide, for example, to put your article that you wrote yourself in a large section on the site. Uh, it can then decide to follow that large article uh, with three tweets that could be uh, semantically related or that could be uh, that could be a good fit because let's say this one has a picture containing a face and these three uh, are, are a small picture with faces as well. Uh, some high level decision like that. And this is what harmonies are all about. So harmonies are uh, kind of a language we've defined uh, to to help our constraint solver uh, organize content in, a, in an impactful way uh, that respect uh, your your design and your intention for the site purpose you, you choose. Um, so once a poet is done we have this vector of sections uh, with cluster of items inside each section uh, and then we send we send that to the mason. Uh, so at this point, it's really just a vector. It's not organized uh, in a website. Uh, but now we will get to a point where the Mason will, will give us uh, a sense of a website by creating or generating the wireframe for your site. So the Mason takes each of these sections and stack them uh, in, in a grid, uh, trying to, to maximize the, the, the space occupied for each section on the grid and also by respecting some constraint that have been defined on certain section. For example, uh, I could say, well, okay, if, if uh, the items that will be displayed in this section is a navigation items, for example, well, I want this section to be on the top of my site. I don't want the navigation to appear in the middle or something like that. So I can constrain that section to always be on the top of the grid. And then I could say, well, uh, I want my CTA, my call to action, to appear somewhere in the middle of my site so I can constrain that as well uh, using the Mason. And the Mason will, will position constraint section in the grid and will then fill in this, the, uh, the empty space in the grid using the, the other section uh, by respecting the flow that was defined by the poet. Um, so after the Mason is run, we we are starting to have a website, we have a wireframe. We don't know precisely which item or which post of content will be displayed in each section, uh, but at least we know which cluster or which subset of those items will, will be displayed at, in each section. Uh, so then we send that to the stylus. So the stylus job is to analyze the grid layout configuration and analyze the cluster of items, their classification, and take some decision for colors, type, type sizing, uh, image filtering, uh, as well as uh, alignment and styling for padding, margin, uh, text alignment, and so on. Uh, so this is really where we, we start to have a feel of a design for, for the site, uh, but we still need to consume or to actually specify which piece of content will appear where and which UI component will be used to render that, that content. So this is what happens next in the creator. So the creator's job is to uh, find the optimal pairing between content and UI components. So we respect what content you, the user asks us to render on their site or on your feed um, and, and do that in an optimal way as well. Uh, by picking the best UI component to do the job for, for that specific case. Uh, and, and this is where we really get a sense of a website uh, because now we're missing some 
more plumbing stuff, but at this stage, we know which item will appear where and by which UI components or view, if you want, it will be rendered. And, and this is uh, actually one of the most uh, computing extensive step in, in our system because it takes information from the stylus, it takes information from the mason, as well from the poet, and also from the classification of items and site to take some decision about how to uh, consume that data and, and, by, and, and which UI component that you choose. Uh, and this is using, again, uh, our mul multiverse uh, module, uh, which is, again, a match of machine learning and constraint programming in there. So after that, we go to the plumber. Uh, the plumber is, is really just injecting some non-visual components in the page, like Google Analytics, Facebook Open Graph, and other web service integration like that. Uh, and at this page, we really have a full full web page uh, with uh, an HTML tag, the editor tag, and the body tag. And inside the body tag, we have uh, the grid here and all of the, uh, the content and the UI component and all that stuff. Uh, and then we go to the, the screener, which is our last step. So this is the really the first time the web page will be rendered on a screen. Uh, it's actually a virtual, will be rendered in a virtual browser. And the reason we do that is because we're using GSS to uh, to create our grid layout. Uh, because it's really, an, uh, so GSS is a library that we've built here, the grid. It's an open source library. It's named a grid style sheet, and it's using a constraint solver to help us position uh, element on the page. Uh, so it's really powerful. But since we want to, uh, to provide an optimal experience to our, the visitor of your website, uh, and since GSS requires some computation to occur in the page, well, we decided to uh, do that computation in, in advance so it doesn't have to happen at, uh, at, at runtime when you visit the website. Uh, so all the GSS is then mapped back to CSS, uh, which is processed really fast by the browser. And, and it's at this stage that we, we generate all the media queries uh, to do responsive design for mobile, tablet, desktop, and cinema version of the sites. And at this stage, we're done. Uh, so the website is built. Uh, a bazillion number of decisions has been taken to, to produce the best website and to produce a beautiful design for, for the website. Uh, and and the tooling we've built really help us uh, navigate in the combinatorial space of all the possibilities that we have for your website. Uh, for example, uh, just to, to give you an order of magnitude, uh, if we go to the stylist, the number of color combination for a website, uh, we've calculated it for a sing simple 10 section website. And it was around 6.45 exposing 64, uh, which is an, an insanely big number of color combination. So the, uh, the AI algorithms that we're using here really help us navigate in that combinatorial space in order to produce a beautiful website in, in a short uh, time. So um, that's pretty much it guys for the, the tour of the composer. Uh, thank you for, for using the grid. Bye-bye.